Aloha, namaste. This is Alexis Cox with Radha Home Yoga, and I wanted to bring you your report for our full lunar eclipse happening tomorrow, Sunday. Um, the actual hours of the eclipse itself is going to be at 9.16 p.m., or excuse me, the hours of the full moon itself are going to be at 9.16 p.m. Pacific time. Um, but the eclipse will be full from about 8.41 p.m. to 9.43 p.m. So we'll have that be the, the range when um, the Earth is between the moon and the sun completely, and it'll be lit up red. This is a blood moon um, because it's a full eclipse. So we'll see only that outer uh, rim of red light will be available to the moon from the sun with the Earth block blocking the path. And um, since this is the time of year where the moon is particularly close to the earth, it's gonna seem like it's maybe, um, you know, 10% or 15% bigger in the sky and it'll look uh, very large and very red. And that can be exciting to look at, although not always recommended. So we have this particular lunar eclipse um, in the sign of Cancer, which is the sign of the moon itself. It is the sign of the mother, of the divine feminine, of our nurturing capacity, our nourishing capacity, and the part of us that loves unconditionally, that really just um, wants to give and give and give and doesn't have a need for something to come back and, um, you know, reward us in return. It's the love of a mother to a child, quite literally. And each of us have cancer um, in a different house. So we all have a different part of our life that's being sort of lit up here. Um, but whatever area of our life that is, it's the area that we're the most vulnerable. And it's also the area where we're the most caring and nurturing um, and, and feminine in many ways. This eclipse marks the end of a year and a half period where we have been focusing on this cancerian energy on this lunar energy with our feelings and our emotions really driving the way and when the north node is somewhere there's a tendency to sort of open up and magnify whatever is going on in this case focus on the feminine um but in a in a magnified sometimes distorted way well magnified is distorted because it's it's not actual it's bigger and the exaggeration also lends to like a frenzy and a a frenetic energy where we just want to consume and consume and consume and um, take in take in take in take in take in but we don't necessarily assimilate what we're taking in um, or digest it so this um, this period of time has been a big opening and awakening on a global scale for us um, who are actually women. We might have really realized all the ways in which, which we weren't okay with our, with our situation um, in our societies, in our respective societies here on earth. And we certainly have seen a blow up of that where we've um, you know just seen many, many, many females step up and speak out about that and, and band together to do that um, through the Me Too movement has been one way in the US that we've um, seen that expressed, but there's been so many different groups from all over the world that have really started to step into their power. We see our, um, our Congress just had a, a number of women elected, way more than we have ever had or seen before. Um, we see that even people are just focusing on bringing that feminine side of ourselves back into balance. So even with men, just trying to, to change our entire perspective in life so it's not quite so patriarchal. And at the same time, we see that backlash that comes, right, where, where the, um, the heavy patriarchy, the heavy power structure that's been really tries to fight back. So it's been tumultuous to say the least. And even the earth herself, um, who is always depicted in a feminine light in almost every culture, I really can't think of a culture that does not depict the earth as the feminine, as the mother, because it's literally the mother of all of us. 
um, ha has been sort of fighting back or screaming because we've seen a lot of natural um, catastrophes occur this year. So we, um, we're at the end of this period of freneticism, but because Rahu brings out a starting of karma, we're not ending our karma with this subject in, in a way. What we're doing is setting forth a new, a new paradigm. And this is the end of the sort of distorted, delusional version of it. And as Rahu moves into Gemini in the next couple months, we'll see a focus more on balance, bringing things into balance, and also on the intellectual realm, and really, you know, really discerning fact from fiction, really um, focusing on balance and discrimination, and using that part of our mind, the buddhi, which is that discriminatory factor, to create something that works for everyone and something that um, works hopefully with the earth and with um, you know a shift in power structures that's clearly happening you know uh, underneath our feet all around us and and within us within our homes within our ourselves and um, and it's really powerful so it's not the end but it's the beginning um, it's the end of, of the sort of blow up explosive part of it and it's the beginning of, of starting to, to move in a different direction where we really are intelligent about it and, and able to ultimately make new, uh, new shifts and new structures and new ways of going forward, not just for ourselves personally, but in the world at large. And we'll see that continue on as, as the nodal axis continues to shift. But in March, we'll see that become uh, Rahu and Gemini and K2, the south node, will move into Sagittarius. So we are um, in this Cancer place, in this, in this lunar eclipse, we're in a specific star called Pushya. And Pushya is where we are um, really nurturing. It's the part of Cancer that is or the part of the mother that is about the breasts and the feeding and the nourishing. There's a story in the Vedic mythology um, about the King Prithu and he is somehow, um, you know, brought on earth to remedy a situation where there's great famine, where the earth is not producing any produce, any fruits and vegetables and grains, um, the surface is cracked and dry, there's not enough water, and everybody is starving and people are dying. And the earth is in this story uh, taking on the shape or the, the body of a cow. And she runs from this king, from King Prithu, and he chases her. And when he catches her, she starts crying and says that you know that the earth has been destroyed you've taken everything from me humans and even you know even the gods and the sages have been just depleting me there's nothing left for me to give i can't and he you know says well i'm, I'm here you know to get you to start producing more even though you've been tapped out, you've got to come up with more somehow. And anyone who's ever been a mother knows that's pretty much a story of, of your life. So she says, okay, bring me a calf. Bring me a calf and I'll feed it. So he starts with Manu, the original human, and brings, brings him as a calf to her and she feeds him at her udders. And um, from this grains and vegetables, start to come and then they come forward with the sages and the sages decide to send Brihaspati which is the um, the counselor and he is really associated with Jupiter with the planet Jupiter who's exalted in the star of Pushya in the sign of cancer it's the, it's the exaltation point for Jupiter because really our highest beliefs our highest ideals and our highest wisdom comes when we're being unconditionally loving when we're compassionate and when we um, have that level of devotion that really comes uh, from that motherly energy so Brihaspati comes and also feeds as a calf from the mother cow 
um, who is Earth, who, who is Boom Devi, and she gives him all the mantras and all the prayers that are needed to bring back the balance of the spiritual. So the material is coming back as well as the spiritual so that balance can be brought um, back into place. And it's a really beautiful story and very potent for these times that we're in right now. So um, I hope that that sheds a little light on, on this eclipse for you. We have you know, the sun and the south node across the way, of course, because that's how full moons work with the sun and the moon in opposite degrees. And then of course, the, the nodal axis is always across from each other. So we had that partial solar eclipse two weeks ago in Capricorn. And the planet Mercury has just joined in. So it's been in Sagittarius and is just not even at a degree um, for this lunar eclipse into Capricorn. So we'll see that our speech, which has been very um, perhaps you know, a little fiery and um, very belief-driven, very idealistic, very much spouting what we think is right or not right, um, as, as Sagittarius brings us to, we, we'll see our speech start to get more grounded. We'll see our communication begin to take an earthier tone and a much more practical tone. That's one of the things that really comes about in Capricorn. We see humility, we see practicality, and we see functionality. We see a desire for things to make something happen. So your words might have a real utilitarian effect where it's just like, this is what I want to come of this, so this is what I'm going to say. And also what you want to take in, informationally speaking, is going to have that same vibe about it because it's, it's, um, it's just the energy of Capricorn. So uh, that, that can be helpful in many ways as we move forward and try to really make sense of what we experience in the eclipse. Generally, eclipses are sort of, they're, they're like a reset when everything um, that is the most not of this world and, and um, not of the material grounded reality can come through at that time. And of course, if you already have a lot of intelligence, a lot of spiritual wisdom, and you're in a meditative state, then a lot can really be downloaded in this time. If you are really stuck in the material world and really um, outside of your own self, it can be very confusing, very delusional, and very disturbing. So it's not a um, it's not a positive or negative thing across the board. It it really depends on you and your place with yourself and also your planetary alignment. So if you have any planets in Cancer or um, even in even in Capricorn, and also what uh, what house it is for you, what what part of your life is really being strummed up here and um, so this particular lunar eclipse will have a lot of power in it and also a lot of that that you know chance to really nurture and nourish yourself and bring in your feminine energy really bring yourself into balance especially if maybe you do live in more of the masculine world or you are more of a doer um, perhaps it's a good time to, to sit in reflection with yourself and if you're already very emotive and very much in your feminine it could um, increase that so you know maybe something that really earths you or grounds you or at least not engaging in a situation that's going to bring up that high emotional level for you is probably most recommended it's not best to really make anything specifically happen right leading up to an eclipse or during an eclipse it's more like the the um you know information that you receive during the eclipse might then inform your next choices from thereafter so that's really the way i like to deal with eclipses themselves so we have um Venus and Jupiter in this eclipse are also now within one degree of each other. They've been moving closer and closer. Venus has been moving closer to Jupiter in the in the sign of Scorpio, and we see that now they're they're right there, right next to each other. This can bring about um, a couple different things. One, you might be really seeking more of that spiritual connection in your relationships, more of a belief oriented relationship, especially if you're not in one already. But even if you are in one, um, you might be seeking to to really bond in that way. Um, and also with others, other adults, not just um, romantic partners. But we also see that we might be feeling that others, especially those romantic partners, are keeping us from our spiritual practices. That maybe there's, um, you know, daily practices we want to do or things we really, we really want to practice that, that keep us in our spiritual essence and keep us moving in the direction of our beliefs and ideals. 
and maybe our partner or maybe even you know a friend or, or other people are keeping us from that in some way so that's something to be just aware of that we might feel that that sense of that because it's in Scorpio there's a lot of emotion again and a lot of psychology there's a lot of this sort of psychological thing that goes on in Scorpio and some of it can be um, somewhat controlling and manipulative at times and certainly um, fiery there's moments of, of working through anger as well as emotion so that's also something to be aware of because we've had this really um, wonderful exchange of signs between Mars and Jupiter. We've had Mars in Pisces, which is Jupiter sign, and Jupiter in Scorpio, which is Mars sign. We see there's a lot of wisdom flowing between these two right now. And while they always kind of do well in each other's signs, this might give us a little more courage to really step into our spiritual practices from Mars exchanging with Jupiter. And then also with Mars and Pisces, we sometimes have a tendency to take a path of least resistance and not really, um, it, you know, we might have some, we might have our actions in a spiritual direction, but we also might sort of just not want to deal with things that seem hard. But with that exchange of signs, again, we have this opportunity to really make it more about letting go of things that aren't working for us rather than taking the path of least resistance, things that aren't um, serving our higher purpose or our higher spiritual path can be let go of maybe even in a really nice way right now, especially with that Venus conjunction. Uh, maybe we can really have a, a good a good way of um, releasing things that don't serve us and, and just navigating a different way so that we're not continuing old paradigms and old um, old habits really so we see that Jupiter is looking at Mars because of the special drishti five planets away and then they also have that exchange of signs and at this point they're actually only two degrees apart as well so Mars is at 19 degrees Jupiter is at 21 degrees and Venus is at 20 degrees so both Mars and Venus are moving into Jupiter's direct orb um, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the fact that, well, Jupiter's a slower moving planet, so Mars and Venus are the ones moving in and quickly, um, especially Venus will be right on top of him. Um, so the other thing that we have is Saturn still in Sagittarius, and Saturn is there just holding down the beliefs, um, giving us commitment in the direction of our beliefs, and without Mercury there, which was just there that's why I bring it up um, with you know the Sun having just moved into Capricorn with all of these planets sort of out of Sagittarius it's really just that commitment to the beliefs without all the other fire and ice and um, verbal or communication issues coming into play so we uh, we really have a powerful opportunity here with this particular eclipse to stand not only strong in what we believe to find the compassion in what we believe to find that unconditional love in the universe at large and for others to really um, to really step into true spirit and and true power really because um, true power just never really comes from a controlling place it comes from a place of love and to also really step up into our relationships and our relating with others using our spiritual growth and using our path um, that, we're, that we're trying to, to move forward on and speaking our truth and speaking in a way that um, allows what our needs are to be expressed and to move forward in that way. So this is a really powerful time um, and a, a, an ending, like I said, to a cycle, but really in many ways setting forth a new paradigm for our future as individuals and as a whole. So I personally am very excited about this lunar eclipse, have been for a while, and am excited to see where we all um, move forward from here. I don't have um, anything more to say on this particular eclipse. I'm gonna, gonna talk about some future alignments coming up soon. So if you'd like to stay in touch, you're welcome to sign up on my website for your free reports. They come usually just every two weeks for the full and new moon unless something exciting is happening. Um, and also right now there's an opportunity to get your free report of Jupiter for all 12 signs. So Jupiter in Scorpio for all 12 rising signs. And that can be really helpful just to know what's being lit up for you and what Jupiter rules in your chart 
and I always do reports like that so there'll be one for the new nodal axis to coming up in March and that will also be very helpful to you. I hope this has been enjoyable and I bless your your full lunar eclipse experience, your blood red moon. If you want to go see it, I understand it is quite epic to look at, um, but also really staying in a meditative prayerful space indoors is, is recommended as well. Um, and maybe chanting or focusing on that divine feminine. If you have any um, connection to divine feminine actual goddess images, you can use those or you can just kind of channel your own feminine energy, uh, whether you're male or female. And if you like this, please mark like or comment and share. And I hope to see you again real soon. Aloha. Namaste.